American. My answer isn't even worth comment, but it's the... It was the question that changed my life. It caused me to read, to, caused me to look at the founders, and do everything that started getting me back up to speed on what America is. And reading the founders was absolutely huge in that. But once I came back here, started reading, looking at everything, you started getting what's happening in the gover in governance now. You know, everybody feels that pain, that stress, and stuff of what the government's doing. With the background of the information of the founders, I started getting it and going, that's it, that's bad, that's not good. So get, getting involved, and that's what I've done. That's what's brought me here. So with this all goes back to kind of when we're young, when we're kids. I remember my parents making me do things as children, then it just drove me nuts. You know, there's a bully. They'd make you stand up to a bully. If you don't stand up to that bully when you get home, you're going to have to answer to me. You know, I, I, that, is, that is so crazy at that age when you're doing it, when you're being brought up by, by your parents. And, and they would even... Sometimes you would go and they would ask you, why did you do that? Because everybody else was doing it. And then the comeback from there is, if they jumped off a bridge, would you jump off a bridge? Now, they would make you stand up, no matter how uncool it was, to raise your voice, to be that person in the room that the friends go away from. And even if it was, like, uncool, they were trying to get you to understand that bad and to be cruel can also be seen as cool or just the way it is, fashionable, chic. Look at today's media, look at the news, look at everything that's going on in the movies, from gi giving away secrets to having soft porn as PG-13. Things are a little funny. Now, we always seem to adapt to our surroundings, and our surroundings now, arguably for the past 30, 40, 50 years, have been being eroded. We seem to go by the path of least resistance, and we seem to not understand good versus evil, we look at what is easy versus what is right. We'll go without good discipline or anything taught by our parents. We'll go with what's easy. And we tend to go the path, um, the path of least resistance with our parents, teachers, chaperones, unless... and <laughs> They teach us all these things to let us know it's not about us. Yeah. As a kid, you know, you go to pet the cat, you grab the thing and you almost, you see the kid almost break the tail off the cat because that cat I want to pet, like. Uh, all kids do it. And you've got to get them away from, it's all about them. They want another ice cream. They want this. They want that. Then you let it go. That's you being selfish. Anyway. Your parents want what's best for you. And if you start going to, into groupthink, or the way that kids can, as a group, go wrong very easily, what's wrong is easy. And doing what's wrong or what's expedient is almost like being addicted to drugs. Because down the line, as grown-ups now, looking back on things we've done in each one of all of our lives, Sometimes if we don't have forgiveness, it will eat your soul. And they're trying to put these values upon us, so when we're in that situation, we can avoid that. I'm saying all of this to say, we talk about the Constitution, we talk about everything that's in, important from our founders. What is your Constitution? If you do not have the Constitution to stand up to what is wrong in your immediate presence. Somebody being out of line, somebody using foul language, somebody doing lewd behavior, somebody doing whatever it is. 
and that you're just letting it go. That's what's easy. That's not what's right. Now, your parents are instilling you a constitution. And, you know, Dr. Spock should be burnt from here to hell. Because... <laughs> Because the only way you get values in this world is through tough love. Only if you've failed, only if you have fallen from whatever grace people think or trust of you, do you learn if you're given everything on a silver platter and you've never experienced any hardship whatsoever. You'll do what's easy, not what's right. Now, of course, in our lives as kids or whatever, we've failed to do what we're told by our parents, by our founders, by our God. Of course we do. But the lesson is, we get back up. Do you get back up? I mean, you sit there, you dust yourself off, and you get back in the game no matter what. And that's, you know, in high school to win the basketball game or the football game. But the thing is, in life, it doesn't have to be a game, a gunfight, or a revolution that some people will sit there and talk about. It could be about business, it could be about family ties, it could be about anything. What is your constitution? It's what, it's what drove, drove me to get up where, okay, in Bud's, every day there, is absolutely despicable, horrible, tough to do. Every day is set to failure. That's boot camp. That's military. That's hard knocks. That's tough love. That's getting everybody, that's getting that guy next to you that you will die for. And you know, people call us heroes. No. You're just not going to let that guy go on your watch. And that's who we all are now. I mean, arguably, my points are usually towards, we're in a cold civil war. The person standing next to you either waving a flag or writing something to somebody or calling your congressman. Those are your other regulars standing next to you. Those are the people sitting next to you now. Now, around here, we have militias. I'm really starting to get cozy with that. I'm oddly comfortable with that. Now, I'm not standing here, I mean, you don't see me with a bandana around my head, face paint on, sitting here talking to you with a gun held above my head screaming, revolution, you know, let's go get them. Violence is the last thing you ever, ever want. You don't come back from that. It's everything from this to that that we have to know to hopefully avoid what our founders had to go to, to go through and remind us today what we'd have to do to get ourselves back again. These guys have just taken an oath to each other. They've taken an oath to you as a citizen to, if anything happens, whatever, if it's a disaster, if it's an economy crash, if it's a foreign Russian invasion of whatever proportions. These are people who just are in a gun club, who own guns, they're enthusiasts, they understand what the good people around them believe, and they practice. They'll shoot, they'll move, they'll communicate, they'll work together. Like everything around here, when a hurricane hits, what do you do? You work together, you get yourself back on your fucking feet. It's what you do. These guys are just, per you guys prepare for bad weather. These guys prepare for bad times. Arguably, they could be upon us. Who knows in what form. Now, these people that are around you with those guns, securing this area, making sure it's good, it's nice, it's comfortable, safe, they're nice, they're congenial. Have you spoken to any of these guys? They have military backgrounds. They have ways of living their lives. Rules that they live by that they will not compromise on. They will say, you go that far and you go no further. They're your countrymen. They are your last hope. The founders have told you that. 
they put it, the word militia, it sounds funny to maybe people outside of here, but the thing is, they gave it to us in our Bill of Rights. They gave it to us in our Constitution. And they said, well regulated. To me, that just means those guys are locked down tight and they're good. Yeah. Yeah. They know how to shoot, move, and communicate. So these guys, these militia, these people talking, these people moving and shooting, yes, that makes them dangerous to people who look to control you. When do you get to bump, be that bump in the road that they can't come over? I can't go down that road because these people are tough. I can't just roll over on them. Oh, hey, okay, let's go over here and do this. You know what I'm saying? Like, it'll, it stops the government from coming for you. These guys, each individual one of them, have constitutions that they will stand for and what they will not stand for. So we have to get to that as well. Because you understand government. This kid's running for government. You've got checks and balances. You've got one house to the next, and they're supposed to be going at each other to... I hear reverb coming. Um, what is the check and balance for the government to us? What stops the government from rolling on us? And that's your Bill of Rights, that's your Constitution. That's the only thing we have. That's your militia. That's the people standing around you with guns saying, what is it? I, Isaiah 6 8, 6 8. God says, Who will go for us? And I said, Here am I. Send me. That was the, the motto of my Buds class, by the way, as well, kind of interestingly enough. But that's what these people do who live amongst you, who talk, and they're not crazy that everyone else tries to brand them as. They're just like the rest of us. Now, remember, we are the people. We have to take responsibility for what we have spawned, our government. It is from the consent of the government. Like children, our politicians, if not watched with jealous antipathy, the press should be in on that too, but they don't do that. They will tend to do what's easy and what's good for them. Because you know why? Because we're not looking. Best thing the devil ever did was convince you he didn't exist. Nah, yeah. politicians, they all, nah, nah, he'll do the right thing or something. They just insulate you with the rules, make them hyper complicated, and then when they feel like it, they just enforce the ones that they want, that they've already had in place. And our country is lost. What recourse? What is our recourse to a government that now openly and without hesitation disobeys our laws to its, to our laws, to it? The Bill of Rights, the Constitution, and they seem to be more demanding on our citizenry with their rules. The rules that you start looking and what are the percentages of the people who do not agree with these rules? What are you doing? You're our voted officials and you are passing rules that are unconstitutional, unlawful, and you're expecting us to live by your rules when you will not live by rule number one of the Constitution? Where does that put us? What does your personal constitution have to say about that right there, where the Constitution of the United States is basically forfeit? Your first, second, third, you can go right down the line. Most of your top ten amendments are gone. Now, there's always going to be antithetical ideas to you. Yeah, we've got a government, supposedly they're on our side, they're supposed to provide for our welfare and whatever. And those are issues in our house. We have to take care of that. But now, there's people in this world that don't like you. 
There's people in this world that don't agree with you, that do not believe that the lady sitting next to you should sit next to you, walk next to you, or have just one. There's so many things out there that don't like you right now. And we have to be aware of them. There's people in the world today that are so against your constitution that they will cut our heads off. They will saw them off with dull knives or whatever. They will cut organs out of people's chests. And they will throw, they will offer it to their God, saying God is great, Allah Akbar. These people call to their God. You've got some politicians who say, no, it's just like them saying thank God. You've got a people who grab these little girls of your faith, take them, 15 men, marry her in the morning, rape her all day, divorce her at night, marry her again, to 15 people in a row right before dismembering the body because of her religion. Understand that there are things in the world, civilizations that look to do you in by their holy books, by their knowledgeable people through history are telling them the same thing. And if you sway from their books, it's justified within their perception of peace that you be dispatched. Got it? Now, we have to start looking at things going on in our country. Look at Benghazi, look at extortion, look at a lot of this fake scandals that you've got going on. What is your personal constitution in relation to the constitution of the United States? We gotta start talking to the people next to us, the people all around us about getting that back. Because if we don't understand it personally, and we will not go to the ends of this earth to keep it, Ben Franklin's, Ben Franklin's saying, will go by the wayside. His warning to that lady saying, a republic if you can keep it. There are tons of people out there. There, are, there is a civilization <coughs> on the other side of the world that comes to do you in. Start paying attention. Know your enemy. And these are the times that try men's souls. For something wicked, this way comes. Ben Smith.